that is a lot of drone. But before I get into each and every one of them, Five hundred. Yes, I know that that might not seem a lot, but for me it is, and it is a milestone. So I wanted to thank my subscribers for staying with me, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll get even more subscribers in the future, and maybe one day I'll reach the five hundred thousand, five million. Who knows? Anyways, uh, since um, I'm growing and we're all growing together, I wanted to give you even more content than what we have. So I'm creating two new series. Also, I'm moving the Carlito show from Friday to Thursday. And the new series are, first of all, I'm going to start doing a lot more reviews. So I'm going to release a review for a specific item every second Friday. And secondly, the second series I'm creating is gonna be called Drone Myth Busting. I know it sounds a little bit similar to some other busting around in the internet, but hey, uh, <laughs> that's the best title I could think of to describe what I'm gonna be doing, which is actually like myth busting in quotes. Uh, you'll have to wait and see what that's actually gonna be like. But uh, let me stop talking and actually show you um, the main content of this video, which obviously is thanking my subscribers. But I also wanted to show you my quad collection and talk a bit about it. I thought I'd start with one of my favorites, which is the uh, Scout Trooper on a speeder bike from Star Wars. And what I did is I bought a speeder bike from, I think it's Asbro and uh, converted it into a flying quad and uh, well, basically I just attached a couple of uh, arms to the bottom of the uh, Asbro frame I drilled a couple of holes so I could fit the flight controller and uh, PDB underneath and then I had a connection for the um, battery that also hangs underneath the speeder bike and um, the motors as you can see are inverted and all of this is just so you can see the um, motor spinning uh, in front of the FPV, which is located in the Scout Trooper's head. And then his backpack is uh, a, uh, I think it's a 25 milliwatt transmitter. It's, I love it. So this is a, a micro from um, Microprops, I believe. And uh, it's like a dead cat configuration. So it's made so the props don't show up again on the VTX. And it's pretty neat, it flies super fast. And again, it's uh, uh, one of the quads that I made a couple of videos. I think it was uh, in uh, quads that you should, well, uh, micros that you should use for, for winter. Um, with this, this pretty much flies like a, like a proper quad. One of my favorites, the micro tricopter is missing an eye, uh, and it's amazing. This is the um, first tricopter that I managed to actually get flying properly, uh, and it's just so so nice to to fly. And again, uh, huge kudos to Micro Props for creating the frame uh, and uh, building this because this is just it's it's sweet. It's, it's amazing to fly as well, as a tricopter. This is one of my Connex um, HD quads. And the frame is a raggy frame. Um, and as you can see, I don't have any antennas. That's because, uh, and if you, if you look at my uh, uh, no FPV antennas video, I like to put all my antennas away from um, any harm. Because when I'm, when I'm training, I try to fly as hard as I can, and that normally means that I'm going to crash as hard as I can as well. Uh, so I put the antennas most of the times in the arms. So these are the Connex antennas, are in the arms. Obviously, it reduces the signal quality slightly, but nothing that I would um, be concerned in flying in the ranges that I fly. So 
so I don't fly too far away from me and for racing purposes and practice purposes this is this is great for me because I end up not breaking an antenna every second lipo um, and again the uh, other antennas for the control are in the arms uh, the motors I'm using most of the motors that I use are T motors and these are the F60 um, version so slightly big and bulky and heavy and uh, 2450 kV it's it's these motors are the best motors I've ever tried and th this literally pulls like 1.7 kilos with 6 inch props this is actually a test quad uh, that I have and it's using super old Cobra motors I, I, I don't think I can even see the uh, oh there it is so uh, <laughs> so dirty I haven't used in uh, them in a while and these are Cobra 2300 god these are like one and a half years old already but they still fly great and I use this frame or I've used this frame for the um, 3D video that you can also find in my channel so you can uh, put I, I made a special mount so that the 3D lens comes um, in the sides and doesn't get hit by the props uh, and it's protected the best way that it can be and it's just so again uh, th th things even though this is pretty old like Cobra Motors to 2300 and I'm ev even using rotor rotor geeks RG20s that don't exist anymore or uh, I mean I think they're discontinued you can probably still find them lost uh, in, in eBay or something like that but this flies amazingly still and it's uh, it's interesting to see that a lot of people are going for always for the new stuff um, that's out there but something like this something simple can still fly uh, as smoothly as something that you build today with the latest motor technology and latest uh, ESCs and uh, and BL heli settings. Preferred um, drone for freestyle. Why is that? This is a KISS FC. The motors are um, Emacs. I think they're 20... Oh, they're 2600. Although I should really change it for uh, 2500 sorry for 2300 because I, I like the feeling of those um, a bit more for uh, for freestyle these tend to eat up a lot of light bulbs I mean they're faster obviously the higher KV the faster the motors are gonna spin but uh, that also means that you're gonna drain a lot of battery faster uh, basically because it's spinning it's spinning faster so it's drawing more energy to do that the ESC's are 25 um, amps from KISS as well and then I have uh, what do I have here a PDB which is from pineapple pineapple pan apple pan no uh, <laughs> I think it's a pineapple and it basically just yeah it's pretty good it just uh, gives me my um, uh, information that I need about the battery on the OSD and even the uh, milliamps that I spent so I know when to land. Uh, I've actually used this recently in an episode you can go and browse for 360 um, Azure prop video and uh, you'll be able to see this same quad testing the Azure yeah, two props that survived um, and the racecraft props as well Oh, and the frame is a clone from the Alien frame. Another Connex setup, uh, this time on a carbon fiber frame. And this is another Raggy frame. This one isn't out yet, so it's just a prototype. And it's called, um, I think, Connex Curse as well. The cool thing about this frame is that you can see it's a, a stretched X. But, if you take this pod out and you flip it in that direction, then it becomes 
a 6 inch quad the props uh, you, you can put a 6 inch now because the props would hit here but once you switch this it means that the props will won't won't hit the main frame and you can spin 6 inch props on all sides that's pretty cool um, aside from that this this flies amazingly I'm running a Betaflight F3 on um, on this and this was actually not my um, HD uh, connects quad I actually had a regular uh, analog setup here but uh, I needed a frame for HD for a video that you'll see uh, pretty soon so I had to change the HD um, connects unit to this frame and it fits pretty nicely I mean it's uh, snug there kind of the, the back stands off just ever so slightly but there's no the props aren't gonna hit it or anything this is another one from Microprops and again this this tiny little thing is is amazing this you can you can fly this like a quad even if it only has a 1s um, battery and this weighs peanuts I mean it's a uh, we actually have a scale here put it up 44 grams the next wing from a company called Propel that have just started releasing some uh, uh, Star Wars drones and the, the coolest thing about this this quad is that it can shoot lasers from it well not actual lasers I think there's gonna be a an update that will allow it to actually shoot lasers out of it but for now it shoots like an IR beam um, which if it hits another quad uh, like this so from Propel as well I have a little um, receiver underneath that takes the hit and makes this the quad spin slowly out of control um, until it finally lands so it's basically, basically you're battling and so I've obviously added a little FPV camera on the back so I have all of this front to see in FPV a little um, 3 inch now I would love to say that this quad is amazing it flies like a bat out of hell but unfortunately the motors that I'm using which are DI West DI D Y S yeah D Y S um 3100 kV aren't the most powerful and can only take uh three S batteries I've tried four S batteries on this quad and after a couple of flights the motor one of the motors just uh, just dies one of my most amazing creations it's my own uh, attempt to create a uh, <laughs> a racing quad uh, so to speak so it's based obviously on Ferrari and I drawed um, the quad uh, red I painted the plate uh, as you can see not very well and uh, placed a ton of stickers so it would look the closest as possible to an actual uh, Ferrari as a quad. The frame itself is a TSX 220 if I'm not mistaken from uh, Tom Stanton's frames. It can spin a 6 inch prop although it's primarily tuned for uh, 5 inch. I've tried this the other day with, with 6 inch it was just mental it wouldn't have it. Um, also a nice feature on this is that this can actually be a night quad <laughs> this is bulky as hell as you can see um, I'm missing the lid which is somewhere around uh, my flat and I could I just couldn't find it and inside you have the uh, a flight controller which is just a basic nase and this actually fits a 2200 um, milliamp 3s battery and it flies I think it's 8 inch props if I'm not mistaken um, it flies pretty well and the coolest thing is that you can see here the FPV camera when it lands on the water so this is obviously um, uh, impermeable uh, water won't get inside uh, from the bottom it can carry GoPro as well on the bottom and when it lands on the water the water level is just slightly higher than the FPV so when it lands on the water 
the FPV can actually see underwater. Next, I have a small uh, raggy curse, a mini raggy curse. This is super cute. It flies pretty well, but again, can only take three S batteries because of the DOI S motors. The um, um, inside you, I have a NASE, like a tiniest NASE board, and yeah, that's pretty much it. A little uh, weird creation. This is actually a transporter quad, and if you look underneath, there's a little servo, uh, which is missing the arm. But uh, if the arm were to be there, were to be there, you could use this elastic band to attach whatever you want uh, underneath the quad, and um, on a switch command, it would release the elastic and thus release whatever cargo it was holding. The cool thing also about this quad is that the uh, front camera is also on a servo and can be moved up left right oh actually not left right left right you'd have to yield the quad but it has uh, specific presets that will um, put the camera up level or looking all the way down and this is my long range quad uh, and one of the quads that i feel that i can go crazy and try crazy things far away from here from sorry far away from me because the internal receiver. So all of my quads have the same type of receiver, which is either the uh, X4R or the XSR from uh, FR Sky, with the exception of this. This has a crossfire inside, and the um, VTX inside can be uh, changed by, uh, by a remote through OST can go from 25 milliwatts up to 800 milliwatts. So if, I, if I'm going to a place that I'm gonna fly super far away from me and I don't know if I'm gonna get problems with either connection or VTX, I use this squad. Um, yeah, and it's from TVS. It's stock aside from the uh, motors, which I changed to F40s 2300 kV from T-Motors. This is the original frame from uh, Sharpoo and this is when I started experimenting with different types of antennas so this was the first uh, my first type of experiment and I'm using a little um, TVS Unify I think it's not a pro version it's a 5 5 volt version and it has a, a, just a, a tiny pigtail which I think is soldered directly into the um, VTX the rest is pretty um, normal I mean the motors are F40s 23, no 2500 kV, uh, has 20 amp uh, ESC. I use it for freestyle outside because I think this uh, uh, the uh, VTX can go again up to 800, so it's uh, pretty good for freestyle. This an oldie from the past. It's it's an amazing quad. Uh, it's actually a 360 quad because it's well it's missing. One of the cameras but it has cameras on both ends which means that at a flick of a switch i can change from this camera to that camera which means that if i have for example a gopro turn towards the front and i switch to this camera i can literally change the quad around and fly backwards into stuff and i can still see tiny whoop stock and i have a pretty neat cover uh, for it, QX80 again, pretty neat quad, uh, very light, doesn't have the protections that a tiny whoop has, but it's still weighing at a comfortable 40 grams uh, with 8.5 um, motors. Uh, this thing as well flies like a quad, has a lot of power. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty neat. I'd recommend it for a for a beginner, especially not as nice as this. This is my current tiny whoop crazy maniac quad. The motors are gold motors. Uh, I think they're called from B Racing or B Motors or whatever they're called. The <clears throat> flight controller is a acro flight controller uh, so it's a B, B flight controller something something or other and then it has a little cover and as you can see it's mostly painted in black 
none of the LEDs are showing so this is my um, stealthy super intense quad and I'll, I'll I definitely have to post a couple of videos on this because it flies like my racing quads I suffered a, a little bit of a crash oh sorry need to change the lens um, and this is I think a rotor evolution quad the flight controller is a um, cyclone again and the motors are the F60 2450 kV from T Motors again these motors are a beast and on this quad which weighs a mere 327 grams this thing is not stopping for anything even if I wanted to 20 amp ESCs I think it's DOIS ESCs um, I'm using a RROSD uh, as a PDB that just sits here underneath the flight controller and the only thing I don't quite like it is that because the flight controller is is basically central so it's part of the structure whenever this hits the floor it's messing up with the OSD sorry with the OSD with the um, flight controller I, I, I really wanted to thank my subscribers and have a video where I show all the kits that I'm using for my videos uh, and as always I hope you guys enjoyed please if you're not subscribed why not subscribe it's a cool channel uh, that has 500 subscribers uh, you will be able to find a link right here or maybe it's right here mm. uh, and as always there's a couple of videos that you can also watch from um, other channels uh, other channels other videos that I've done <laughs> pretty late here. Uh, as always enjoy and 